<laughs> well, good morning. <clears throat> I want to welcome you guys to Grace. Just glad that you guys are all here with us so we can have this opportunity to, to worship together and spend time with God together. We're going to uh, wrap up our uh, The Real Jesus uh, series, um, but we're going to do it a little bit differently, uh, and you'll see why when we get into um, the, uh, the portion of the message, or part of the message, at least you'll see why. But <clears throat> let's say together, let's say our mission statement together. Our mission is... They did a pretty good job. Stephen, I'm not so sure about, but <laughs> but uh, no, they did a good job. So we are wrapping up. We are wrapping up 2020, which means we're wrapping up our 20 to 40 challenge. This has been a challenge that we've um, gone through this year just to, to challenge us, remind us that God calls us to give and to live generously. And so if you've been a part of that, awesome. If you haven't, um, it, just because this challenge is wrapping up doesn't mean um, God doesn't continue to call us. To, to give and to live generously, um, and so we want to remember to continue to do that and keep doing that. <clears throat> when we dismiss you guys, as you guys head out the side doors, there, there is offering baskets. There are offering baskets there that you guys can use, um, but we also have online giving, which is available, which is super simple and easy to sign up for, and we also have um, text to give, which is available as well. And both of them are easy, and one of the nice things about them is that you can set it up reoccurring, so then it's just, it's done, it's happening, and you don't have to worry about um, did I did I bring money with me? Do I have a check or whatever? You can just, you know, set it and forget it, like those infomercials. Um, <clears throat> and it's easy to go. But we're going we're gonna to jump into worship now. I'm going to pray, and we're going to get into worship, and then um, get into to the Word and, and finish this, this series off, uh, hopefully um, for all of us, in a very <clears throat> powerful way, in a very challenging way, um, and then get ready for, for what's next. I've already spilled the, 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 the secret. I said we're going to stay on, on Jesus for a while here. Um, we're not done with him yet. Um, and so uh, it's going to be a great January, February, March, April. I'm not really sure how long this is going to go. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, but we're going to spend a lot of time on Jesus, his teachings, uh, his, his miracles, his interactions with the Pharisees, his interactions with people, a lot of time on all the things uh, that he did. If if I'm going to be a Christian, which means a follower of Christ or a, a little Christ, a little reflection of him, I need to know what, what he looks like in order to look like him. I need to know what he, what he did in order to do what he did. I need to know what he said in order to say what he says. In order to be like Christ, I need to know who he is. So <clears throat> let's pray. Father, we come before you. We're grateful for who you are. We're grateful, God, for all that you give to us, all that you provide for us. And God, as we <clears throat> wrap up 2020 and get ready for 2021, God, we're just grateful and continue to be grateful for all that you do. And Father, we just lift up this service to you, just asking that this would be a time of, of, of rest, a time of refreshment. As we spend time in your word, as we spend time focused on you, worshiping you, singing about you and praising you, God, I pray, God, that all the stuff that we carry, all the stuff that we deal with, all those lists and all those things, that we would just set those aside and really, really just put put this time in, in, in front of you and put our, our hearts and our, 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 our lives in front of you and really just embrace this, this sweet, wonderful moment we have to worship you. And so be with us this service. Just, just <clears throat> God, you do what it is that you do and, and help us to stay out of your way. I know you have something for us today. I know you have something for us during this time and this opportunity we have to seek you, to seek your face. And so we thank you, God, and we praise you. In your precious name, amen. Join us as we spend time in worship. You can stand to your feet this morning. That would be awesome. We're going to worship him because he is king of kings, lord of lords, and he is worthy.
Jesus he's the Savior not only does he bring salvation he is salvation his name is Jesus for he will save his people from their sins but he's also the anointed one he is the Christ he's anointed as prophet because he comes to declare the truth of God He's anointed as priest because he comes to offer himself as a sacrifice to God. He's anointed as king as he comes to conquer sin and darkness and reign supremely and eternally, not only as king of the Jews, but as king of kings and lord of lords. Who is Jesus, you ask? Central in human history, central for all of eternity. This is Jesus. Amen. This is Jesus. And so <clears throat> we're going to finish up and wrap up our series called The Real Jesus. And i and, um, excited to, to what's coming next because we're not stopping um, with the real Jesus. We're going to continue on and, and look at Jesus and spend more time talking about him. And, and this is what we've talked about in this series so far. We've looked at these things. That Jesus is the rock. He's our foundation. He, he's, he's our cornerstone. He's what our lives should be built off. We talk about Jesus being the well, that he's our source. He's where we should be going. And when we're in need, he, he's where uh, uh, we should find satisfaction and contentment should be with him. We talk about Jesus being our grace, and that he loves us, and that he forgives us, and he provides for us. And it's not because we've earned it. It's not because of how great we are. It's because of how great he is. And then Christmas Eve, we talked about Jesus being the light. And that as Jesus is the light and Jesus shines into the darkness of my world, I have the opportunity then to turn around and be the light for others. Oswald Chambers says this. He says, worship is giving God the best that, um, sorry, giving God the best that he has given you. Be careful what you do with the best you have. Whenever you get a blessing from God, give it back to him as a love gift. Take time to meditate before God and to offer the blessing back to him in a deliberate act of worship. If you hoard a thing for yourself, it will turn into spiritual dry rot, as the manna did when it was hoarded. God will never let you hold a spiritual thing for yourself. It has to be given back to him that he may make it a blessing to others. 
And so as we finish up this series, you know, call, call the real Jesus, we finish this up, we're going to talk about Jesus being worthy. And so we're going to get back, and we're going to get back into a time of, of, of praise and worship. Why? Because one of the, one of the I would say the easiest ways, but one of the, 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 the most profound ways that, that we recognize the worthiness of God is, is, through, is through music, is through song, it's through, it's through art. There, there's, such a, there's such an amazingness and an awesomeness and a, dy- a dynamic that exists when we, as, as, as humanity, are, are, use our gifts and our creativity to recognize the awesomeness of God. This whole series started with a question, and the question is in Matthew 16, 13. Jesus asked the disciples, who do people say that I am? Who do people say that I am? And we've looked at not necessarily, we've not looked at what people say that he is because people are going to say all kinds of stuff. We've looked at what does Scripture say. If I'm going to be like Christ, then I need to know who Christ is. And there's no better place to get that from than from his word, from studying who he is to studying his life and seeing what he taught and what he did. So we're going to talk about him being worthy. We're going to talk about our response to his worthiness is for us to be worthy as well. And then our final thoughts. So let's talk about he is worthy. Let's talk about he's worthy. And there's some scripture that we're going to read, and, and, and there's a, there's, there's a, it's, it's powerful. Revelation 4.11 says this, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Psalm 29, 1 to 11, says, Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. I love that line. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders the Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon to skip like a calf and Syrian like a wild, like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare, and in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. And then Luke 3.16 says, John answered them. This is John the Baptist saying, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming. The strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And then John 1, 1 to 4 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And then Philippians 2, 9 to 11, says, Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. Let's read that again. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. God has bestowed upon him the name above every other name. If that doesn't signify the worthiness of Jesus, if that doesn't signify the worthiness of worshiping him, I don't know what else does. His name is above every other name. That at his name, every knee will bow. Everyone will bow in recognition of who he is. See, Jesus is worthy of our worship. He's worthy of our obedience. He's worthy of our time. He's worthy of our lives. 
we're going to spend some more time in worship because it, 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 it's, it, it's such an easy opportunity. Worship, it, is, it, it, just, it, it, does, it gets you in. I mean, there's just nothing else that you can do. When you start hearing you know, music and, and people are talking about God, it, it's so hard to resist <laughs> the draw to worship. But yet Scripture calls us to worship God. Scripture calls us to, 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 to enter his presence with thanksgiving, to enter his courts with praise. And so the worship team is going to lead us in some more worship. And as we, as we spend this time worshiping, as we spend this time with him, as we spend this time singing, listen, put it all aside. It's all going to be there when we're done. I promise you. Because you're not doing it now anyway. <laughs> it's all going to be there when we're finished. It's all going to be there when you're done. All the things that you got to do and deal with, they're going to be there. So why not take this next moment why not take this next time and just put that all away? Just put it aside and just worship him. Put it aside and just praise him. Put it aside and just spend this time with him. Join us again as we worship. Join us again as we spend time putting God first, as we spend time <clears throat> loving and serving and recognizing the worthiness that our God is. Join us again as we spend this time in worship. Amen, if you'd like to to your feet. It is a privilege and an honor to be able to worship the King of Kings. And he calls you his only child, his lovely child.
The story of amazing 
Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid. Bearing all my sin and shame, in love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for your love.
you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. And so we continue talking about Jesus being worthy and that he is worthy. And, and our response to him being worthy, our response to his worthiness is that we ourselves should then uh, live that out, carry that out. We ourselves should be then, then be worthy and, 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 and have the opportunity for others to experience who God is through our lives. And so we're going to continue on. We're going to talk about being worthy. Colossians 3, 12 to 14 says this. Put on then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. And above all these, okay, above all of these, let's go back and look. Go back again. I want to go back to this. Above all of these things, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, above all of these things, put on love. Above all of these things, put on love, which binds everyone together in perfect harmony. If you look at, at, at your, your life, if you look at your relationships, if you look at your community, your world, and you're not seeing a whole lot of harmony, you could ask yourself how much love is really there. Because love binds all these things together and creates a perfect harmony that in my life, there's now a perfect harmony, and the people around me should then be experiencing that. Because I'm okay. <laughs> That's why the Bible says we're supposed to be peacemakers. Not just peaceful people, but actually the makers of peace. We should be making peace. Why? Because if his peace is in me, I can't help but then bring peace to those around me. And if the people around me aren't experiencing God's peace, I have to ask myself, am I? Because I should be making peace, bringing peace, bringing these things, and love above all of these things. Love binds it all together. And then Romans 12, verse 1 and 2 says this, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Holy, is it? Present your bodies as living sacrifices. We're alive. Present ourselves as living sacrifices in total submission and surrender. I'm presenting who I am to you, God. All that I am, I'm presenting to you. But notice what it says. It says, holy and acceptable to God. That only comes through the process and the journey that we should be on, and that's the process and the journey of repentance. Repentance of me turning away from the things that get in the way, turning away from the things that distract, and turning to God. Not just one piece of my life, but its entirety. Present your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. How? How? By the renewing of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. See, we are called to live in the worthiness of Jesus. Not because I've earned it. Not because I can do anything to get it. Not because I, I can come to God and say, hey, I deserve this. But because he loves me. Because he loves me. And so I can, I, I can do and function and live a life very different than the life I think. Not because I, I, I've earned God's love. It's not because I've earned his grace, but he's given it to me. And so I don't have to live my life in, in this depressed, woe is me, my life is falling apart, oh, my life is terrible. We don't have to live that way. Scripture is full of verses talking about peace and joy. 
We don't have to be depressed. We don't have to be down all the time. We don't have to always find a reason to, to, to rip things to shreds. We don't have to always be looking for the worst possible scenario or always, you know, ripping things down so we can always figure out the, 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 the bad part of everything. We don't have to do that. We can live joyful lives because of what he did for us. So let's look at our final thoughts. And we talked about putting on these things, and so I want to I stick with that phrase for a little bit, okay, that, that put on phrase. Because in another part of Scripture, we're told to put something else on. In another part of Scripture, we're told to put on the armor of God, to put on the armor of God. And, and, and what does that mean? It means to put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith. To, to, to put on this armor of God. And what is the purpose of it? The armor of God equips us and it protects us to do the work of God. It's the tools that we need so that we can go forward and carry out what God has called us to do. But see, there's something else that we're supposed to put on. There's something else in Scripture we're supposed to put on. We're supposed to put on the character of Christ. Just like I put on the armor of God, I get ready for battle and I put this armor on to do what? To protect me, to, to, to allow me to, to, to move forward in advance. But I also put on the character of Christ, which does what? It equips me to live a life that mirrors and reflects him. It, it, it gives me the ability, as I put on the character of Christ, I become like him. Then what do people experience in me? The fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, <clears throat> patience. And all the rest. I'll just stop there. That was enough. I put on, if I put on the character of Christ, as I become more like Christ, people then see that. They experience the love of Christ. When, we're, when we spend the next couple months looking at Christ, looking at his dealings with people, even, even this series, we talked about Jesus and the woman at the well. We talked about Jesus and the woman caught in adultery. And both of these people deserved punishment both of these people were guilty both of these people according to the law deserved death what do we see from jesus we see love and we see mercy we see grace and i'm called to do the same thing i am called to function as christ to those around me and that's not a small feat <laughs> that is that is a challenge and it's not an easy challenge, but it is a challenge that we, we, when we say, Jesus, I believe in you, Jesus, I want to follow you, it's a challenge that we accept. But now my life has to match that acceptance. And so what does it require me to do? It requires me to live a life that says, these are the things that are not pleasing to God in my life. These are the behaviors. These are the attitudes. This is the conduct. This is the perceptions. This is all my junk. This is the sin. This is all my junk. God, help me to live a life that turns away from that and turns and follows you. Help me live a life that turns away from that and turns and follows you. That's who we're called to be. At Christmas Eve, I gave people homework. <laughs> and the homework was... We talked about being the light, that God is the light in our lives, and we're called to then be the light in other people's lives. And the homework I gave was for people to, to pray and, 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 and talk to God and find somebody over the next couple of days who's struggling, somebody that you know is in, in darkness, you know that's just, that's just having a bad time, and reach into their lives and, and be a little bit of light. And we held the candles, you know, and we sang Silent Night. And I sat there, and we sang Silent Night, whatever, and I, and I took... I took my phone out, yes, shame on me, I took my phone out during service, and I opened up Facebook, <gasps> even worse, all right, I know, seriously, <laughs> notice how we don't have any more stones on stage anymore, I've removed all of them for my own safety, <laughs> I don't mind you throwing a wax candle at me, I can handle that, but I don't want any more rocks being thrown at me, so I moved them out of the way, they're all gone now, and I sat down, and we were singing Silent Night, I sat down, and I, and I opened up my phone, and I opened up to Facebook, and the first post there was, was a kid that I had met a long time ago, one of the first times I had spoken at this camp, 
and we had met, and, and, and uh, he was already older, so I think there was only a couple times that I ministered there, that I got to preach there, that he was there, um, and, and we've stayed connected over the years. <clears throat> well, here it is, Christmas Eve, and it's the 4 o'clock service, and I open up my phone, and he doesn't, it just a, a short little post, but literally his, his world came crashing down, and he posted that. He's like, my whole world has just flipped on end. And I had just finished saying, <clears throat> find somebody who is in the darkness. Find somebody that's hurting, that's struggling, and reach into their lives. And so I shot him a message. And after we left here, after the, after the last service, we left here. I went home, and I, I, I texted with him a little bit. Him and I talked, and, and he asked for some advice. And, and I was able to, to share some things with him. And, and, you know, and, and we had a great conversation. And the next day, it was Christmas Day. And, I, you know, okay, let me check on him, see how he's doing today, especially because it's Christmas let me check on him. So I checked on him, and, and, and we talked some more. And then the interesting thing happened is as I was pouring into his life, and as I was trying to love on him in this difficult situation, he, he messaged me. He says, hey, Nate, do you remember way back when, when you were you know, at, at BlackRock and you shared this thing? He goes, I just wanted to check to see how you were doing, too, because I know this is a tough time of year for you. And the most, the most beautiful thing happened is that as I was pouring light into him, and being a support to him, he in turn and then was able to turn around and pour light in, back into me and be a support to me. And listen, I didn't support him because I was expecting him to support me back. Truth be told, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see that coming at all. But God did, and God knew that I needed it, and he knew that he needed it. And we had one of those moments where we were able to support each other. See, when I put on the character of Christ, you can you can't hide it. You can't hide it. You become different. You talk different. You walk different. You live different. I'll venture to say you might even smell different. I'm just, I'll leave that up to you. Y'all decided where you're taking that and where you're going with that. But you can't help but be different. I want people to see him in me. See, if Jesus, Jesus is, not if he is, Jesus is worthy of our worship. We said this earlier. He's worthy of our obedience. He's worthy of our time. He's worthy of our lives. But he's also worthy of my willingness to change. He's also worthy of my willingness and my ability, because it's not just like a, well, I want to, but I don't, no, no, no. My ability to turn away from everything that goes against him and to follow him and to live like him and to love like him. I can love like him. Why? Because he first loved me. I can live like him. Why? Because he lived and he died for me. I can bless others and support others like him. Why? Because he has blessed and supported me. I can be like him because he has been him in my life. And no matter what, and this is the beauty of it all, no matter what, he is worthy. No matter what, he is worthy. My circumstances don't change who God is. God is not defined by Nate's year. Because if God was defined by Nate's year, <laughs> okay, then sorry, Lord, <laughs> 20, 2020 wasn't so great. But my, my, he's not defined by me. He's not defined by my experiences. He is defined by who he is and the truth of who he is. And no matter what I go through, he is worthy. Almost everybody you ask, everybody you talk to, 2020, that's everybody's response. That's the, commun the communal sound of 2020 is just, but it's almost over. And it's all over Facebook now because now we flip from Christmas to New Year. So everybody is like, 2020, hindsight 2020, ha ha, everything's over, 2021's coming here. And it's all, everything is about 2020 being done and gone. We cannot wait. We're like running out the door, kicking the door open. We can't wait to get out of 2020. But there's a problem with that. Because my word says that this is the day that the Lord has made. 
I will rejoice and be glad. And too many of us have gone through this year <laughs> not rejoicing and not being glad in the day after day after day that God has given us. Yeah, 2020 is coming to an end, but listen, that doesn't mean that 2021 is going to be any better, so let's, let's just put that out there. <laughs> we, we have no clue what's coming down. Them murder hornets got real quiet for a while, all right? Springtime is coming. You have no clue what's next. But you know what? It doesn't matter what's next because he is worthy. It doesn't matter what's coming down the road. It doesn't matter if it's a good day or a bad day. He is worthy. It doesn't matter if my circumstances are exactly the way that I wanted them or literally it feels like all hell is broken loose in my life. He is still worthy of my praise. And when I begin to shift all the focus away from me and my life and my bad year, my 2020 and my this and my this, and I shift it to he is worthy, everything begins to change. Why? Because I change. My circumstances might be the same, but the way I see them changes. Listen, if you had a tough 2020 and you got a bad attitude, your 2021 is going to stink too. And it's not because the year smells. It's because you do. We've got to change. I want to be more like Jesus. And no matter what I go through, I'm not worried. Why? Because he is worthy. God did not step off the throne in 2020. And he's not going to reclaim it in 2021. He's been there the whole time. And he's had us the whole time. <clears throat> We're going to end with a song. And the song asks the question, is he worthy? And I don't have to answer it for you. because We know the answer. He is. But we're going to end with this song, and, and those watching live will post the link so you guys can, um, can connect with it and you guys can, <clears throat> can watch it too. But we're going to end with this song, and while this song is playing, this is what I want, I want all of us to do. Whether it's the entire length of the song, maybe you need the whole length of the song, maybe it's, you need three seconds <laughs> of it. Go back to January 1st, 2020. Don't actually go back there, okay? It's been a rough year. Nobody wants to go back. Just go back in your mind. <laughs> go back in your mind on January 1st and start going through this year. Maybe, it's, maybe you remember week to week. Maybe it's month to month, January, February, March. Just start going through. But this time, don't look for the stress. Don't look for the anxiety. Don't look for the difficult. Don't look for the, the, the tough time. Don't look for the hurt and pain. Don't look for the failure. Start in January and start working through this year and look for the blessing. Look for the miracles. Look for the healings. Look for all that God has done. Sometimes we spend way too much time, woe's me, way too much time, this is the worst day ever. This is the worst thing ever. And we forget that he is worthy of my praise no matter what. I've said it so many times, I'm not going to stop saying it. One, because I need to hear it for myself. But two, there's a lot of other people in here need to hear it too. This is the day that the Lord has made. Easy, hard, challenging, stressful. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the year that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will not let the circumstances of 2020 rob me of my joy. I'll say this. I have to add this to it any longer. Because I've let it rob me of my joy way too many times but I won't let it rob me any longer. And you know what? I'm not going to let the stress of 2021, because it's going to come with its own stress and its own issues, rob me of my joy. Because my joy is not in my circumstances. It's not in my year. My joy is in the Lord. And no matter what I deal with, no matter what I face, he is worthy. Let's pray. Father, we come before you in this moment, 
recognizing one simple thing. You are worthy. You're worthy of our praise. <clears throat> You're worthy of our lives. You're worthy of our obedience. You're worthy of our submission. You're worthy of our surrender. You're worthy of our finances. You're worthy of our time. You are worthy of my entirety, the entirety of my existence, being laid at your feet as a living sacrifice before you, God. You are worthy. And God, as we spend this time in, in, in worship, as we spend this time reflecting, show us the countless ways that you have provided, the countless ways that you have blessed, the countless ways that you have protected, the countless ways that you have been you through this year. We thank you, God, for all that you've done for us in this incredible, this amazing, this beautiful year of 2020 that you gave us, God. We worship you because you are worthy. Amen.